You get in the way. <laughs> okay, guys, it is uh, March 19th, 2019. It's 8.01 p.m. We're going to commence the meeting of that architectural review board. We have a busy agenda tonight, so we're going to get to it. The first item is ARB number one, 2019. It's two swab lane. This is, uh, we're going to pass on this tonight. We've already uh, reviewed this, and it's, um, it got a favorable report. So we're moving on to ARB number five, 2019. It is Coco and Bob at 1019 Boston. Hi. How are you? Good to see you. Hi. Hi. How are you? Good to see you. Oh, you can take the hot seat. Oh, great. I'm happy not to be in the hot seat. That's <laughs> great. Well, welcome. Thank you. Um, <coughs> so David does this drill, but I'll tell you, um, just introduce yourself and what your company is and sure. how you relate to it and what you guys are looking to do. Sure, my name is Shannon Gordy. My store is Coco and Lala. We have two stores in Watch Hill. It's a women and children's collective boutique, and I'm just looking to put a sign on the outside. Okay. So you may also yeah. ask, though, too, like, quickly, why are we doing that? If we're going to knock the building down in whatever, 6 or 12 or... I mean, might as well just call spade a spade. Good. Well, let's dive into it. <coughs> Nothing worse than like empty storefronts yeah. in terms of like impact on the town and um, an impact on other existing retailers. And so we've been working pretty hard to try to keep pop ups going and other ideas. So we met Shannon, she's a Darien resident. She's got a great business in March Hill. And we've been talking to her. <coughs> A year or two? Yeah. Two or three? Probably two or three. She would email me in between babies and be like, I think I want to open up a store. And then she would like disappear for a while. And Have now a baby. She's <laughs> like, <laughs> like ready to do it. So um, we basically have the idea of you know, opening the store. It's already open <laughs> without a sign in the existing space where double exposure was. Then moving them into phase one of the development, like from the gas station back. And then probably move back to the new project when it's done. And Ferret, which we'll talk about later, is the same deal, same idea. Okay. So we're super excited. That's great. Good to meet you. Space. Okay, so you can talk us through your, your design a little bit. Sure. Just make sure. We see it. We know it tells us. Um, it's just the white aluminum back frame, and then there are gold, um, I think it's plastic gold letters of our font um, that pop out from the sign. It was a custom font that my aunt drew, and the biggest letter is within the, I think you guys limit. said limit, 10 inches, I want to say. Um, we made sure it was in there. We okay. tried to make it as simple and plain as possible. It's nice, and you've got great windows in that store. We really have yeah. great windows. Yeah. And the window decals are uh, on the bottom of the windows. Uh -huh. And she's next to Morley, which is just been great. And so it's kind of between Green and Tonic, Morley, um, Coco and Lala, and now the cryotherapy place. Like, just like good activity in that block. It is good. Mm -hmm. um, is there lighting on your sign? There's the three lights above. Right. Near the temperate lights. Yeah. Those are there. Those are there. Those right. there. And you're keeping them. Yes. Yeah. We're just making them white. We did get rid of the shingling. Oh, I should point out. We did get rid of the weird shingling. Mm -hmm. That's okay. Remember there was like wood shingling? Yes. We did clean it up and just make it That's simple. True. Probably we should have okay. come to you before we did that. In yeah. candor. But we're just trying to keep it simple and make it look a little fresher. What are those two objects? Underneath? They were flat on oh, holes, but it didn't work out. It was the weekend we opened, so now they're actually not there. That was just an earlier picture, but it's too windy. In Watch Hill, it's a summer store, and we have flags out. Not realizing in Darien, it's not made for flags. It's too windy and cold, so there's nothing. Those are not there. Okay. Yep. Sheila, can you mention what you said about the lighting? Oh, the lighting above, we just wanted to spray paint white. Those three black um, mm -hmm. light mm -hmm. fixtures on the top, if that was okay. That looks better. That would look better. Good solution. Yeah, great. They stand out. Mm -hmm. I think it's yeah, perfect. Well, this, this is the store Thank in you guys. Yeah. I've been to your store. You have? Oh, yeah. good. It's and awesome. We're trying to make this store like similar. Well, there's some in there. If Cute. we're allowed, yeah, that would be great. But um, yeah, the winter it didn't work for sure. Yeah, <laughs> it was oh, going at midnight cute, right? with my husband yeah. to take lessons yeah. yeah. during snow. Yeah. So. Yeah. You're not sticking with it the same sign. So uh, that sign right. is mandatory in Watch okay. Hill. Every storefront has to have that blue sign with oh, white right. okay. lettering. Right. So that was why we did that okay. one there. Yep. Oh, I didn't know that. Mm -hmm. 
That's how every store is. Hmm. Yep, they all have to hang like that. Wow. Yeah. Okay, it's great. So you'll get a favorable report. Mm -hmm. okay. Clearly. Um, so you'll get a letter from me, but in the meantime, go ahead and. Okay. Cool. Okay. Thank you guys. Yeah. Thank you guys so much. Yeah. Yeah. Hi guys. Hi. 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 Oh really? Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 Yes, please reach out. Oh, okay. Hi guys. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. So much. yeah I, don't I hope good things. things. I hope. <laughs> Low energy, Shannon. <laughs> Too much. Did I leave my charger in here? No. No. Story of my life. Okay. Bye guys. Bye. 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 Okay. All right. Uh, next up on the agenda is um, ARB number six. Is that me? I don't know what you're talking. I was waiting. Yes. Oh, okay. It's okay. It's, we are, we're being filmed tonight, by the way, David. Just, yeah, no, no. I want to make sure that it's clear for everyone watching. Um, ARB number six is Baird Bookstore at 6 Corbin Drive. David, just quickly getting it down. Yeah, so... Um, Sheila Daly, the owner of Barrett Books, could not be here tonight, oh, but I'm here to present on her behalf. Um, you know, this is a space in the game that we're kind of playing at the moment of like trying to keep stores full, trying to help other businesses that are getting displaced by other developments like the Neuro and Heist Palmer project. Barrett wasn't really sure what was happening or what the timing was going to be, and they were nervous. Um, we basically started a dialogue with them a while back around the idea of moving them into downtown, which we thought would be good for their business and really great for our project because everybody loves an independent bookstore. Mm -hmm. And Barrett's a <coughs> local icon. Right. Um, and I grew up with Mrs. Daly. I've known her all my life. And um, so we started this dialogue, which necessitated that we relocate the, the gym that was on that space. This was the original. Originally, I came to you, I think, probably 10 or 12 years ago for the little gym. Oh, yeah. which was there for a while. The little gym opened up several stores, so the woman who owned it basically moved away, and so she shut it down. Um, we put in there a, a physical fitness, uh, a trainer, personal trainer named uh, No Limit Fitness, um, but then Barrett had a need for space, and so we, are, we moved uh, No Limit Fitness to 36 Old Kings Highway South into a lower floor there that had been a, a physical therapy center, and we proposed to Barrett to come here. So again, this is one of these complicated things where they're moving in. They'd like to, they're moving in in um, April, mid-April. They've announced that it's public, and um, the idea is that they would move into this space, then we would move them across the street, and then we would move them into the center of the new project and put like the toy store, Darien Toy, for example, next to mm -hmm. Barrett, next to little coffee shops or restaurants, and so and drive a lot of traffic. Um, so the proposal is relatively simple. I mean, we're, again, we're in the spirit of this being, at least for now, kind of envisioned as a pop-up. Um, we are proposing just to leave the blue awnings as they are, because it's a lot of money to change that entire row of blue awnings that goes almost that entire facade. Um, we're proposing to put just a blade sign up, which conforms with the regulations, and you see that on the first page. And then the second page um, shows the um, window uh, decals that um, Mrs. Daly would like to put onto the window. It's basically their logo. So she wants to leave the awning just simple, not touch it. Right. And all the detail and the fonts are listed on the drawings that we had them by Acme sign. What about the fireplace? Um, she's moving the fireplace. Okay. Yeah. She's Is moving that in. That's kind of a tradition. <laughs> it's a, it's a, an intro, like a, a fake heart. Like a, oh. It's a big old mantle. Mm -hmm. okay. And I'm just standing there. Yeah. So even though it is Sounds kind of cozy for it, a it is a really It's cool. Nice feature. Yeah, so we're brainstorming. I mean, we were dri I think we're driving Sheila crazy because we're already giving her like ideas on the new space and she's like, "Can you just let me get through my temporary <laughs> move?" It's a big deal. It's yeah. It's a big deal. It's a lot to move them and um, anyway, we're really excited about it. We think it'll be good for business for Sheila and we think that Barrett's just a great, you know, idea for our, our new project. Mm -hmm. It could be a challenge for parking for her temporarily for, on the Corbin. For the for the customers? Yeah. Yeah. I mean it's a little tricky. It's a little tricky, but um, unfortunately it was announced the last couple of days that Frederick's is closing. <gasps> yeah. Oh, no. So, you know, there is good parking in the Corbin lot between the post office and Ten Corbin and in front of Frederick's. And I'm not sure what we'll do 
with that on a temporary basis. I mean, we've been trying to work through it with them, but they had a group of hairstylists leave to go to different <laughs> salons, and so um, the pressure will be off from Fredericks, although some of you, I know you have noticed, um, we work of Darien, I call it, um, Cafe Nero, is <laughs> like generating enormous parking demand in the area. Enormous. So the parking is a little stressed in the area at the moment, mm -hmm. um, but you know everybody's kind of adjusting and working through it. So you can Corbin tenants patrons can park in that parking lot in between the post office and the club. Yeah, we don't. Oh, I didn't know. That. Yeah, we don't. We don't ticket or patrol that. Um, we try to keep an eye on it if other people are parking there, but we, you know, people from a lot of Frederick's customers have parked there over the years, oh, and yeah. down Corbin Drive and. Right. So. Uh, just a quick question on the um, window decals. I think just by um, part of the rules that you're allowed a certain percentage of the windows uh, for decals from the inside. So I don't have any exception with that. One question though is the uh, rendering show like the vertical striping. Uh, is that going to be repainted and are those planting boxes going to be removed? We're leaving the planting boxes. Um, Sheila wants to do those herself. Okay. So she's going to take over responsibility for those. Okay. So the boxes will stay. You mean the vertical panels below? Yeah, it's just the yeah. way it's you won't see that. like that. It's you won't, a little yeah. busy. Yeah, you but, won't see that. Okay, so that's not going to. It's going to be one color, just kind of as is, right? Correct. Now. Okay. Yeah, we're going to clean up the boxes and replace. I get a couple of them are going to deteriorate. Okay. But then the flowers will be redone. Okay, spring. so they'll be fixed up. Yeah. Okay. So what's our policy about? Um, these qualifiers, like the working bookstore for the reading class. Mm -hmm. On the blade side? Mm -hmm. For the current sign regulations. The working bookstore for the reading class. Well, is that existing on their current store? I think they have it today. But I think now that they're moving, now we have a chance to catch it. Yeah. <laughs> I, I don't know. It, I don't think it is there. I think this is new. No, no, because my Peter Wells, my former neighbor, I ran into him at a funeral in Vermont recently, and he told me that he was actually the crafter of that uh, text. He was uh, an ad guy, uh, so I think it's it's I think it's there now. I don't know. I could take a I could take a look at one. It's a little tiny. I think it's it's a little bit, it's a little confusing. I think. Yeah, it's a little wordy. I think it's yeah. not necessary, and yeah. Um, so you don't like it on the, in any either place. Um, more the hanging sign. I mean, the that's that's where it catches my eye more yeah. than the windows. Yeah. yeah, it can be on the windows, but technically, legally, it's not even allowed on the sign. No. Yeah. So. So maybe, maybe we'll, so we'll just delete it from the sign. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's distracting. Probably. I think. I, I really do. I don't yeah. think it's necessary. Yeah. The only, so then the question is though, if you deleted that, I think the whole all, the font was probably sized based upon mm -hmm. the goal of including that. So if she deleted that, would she then? Wait, could she enlarge the center? Yeah. You slide could she it enlarge, down. And could she enlarge the um, lettering? She could, right? You, she should. But you slide it down so there's more air because yeah. right now it's jammed up to the top. Yeah. So if you do you mind if I could I could I rework that and then circulate it by email to you? Yeah. Maybe they have an ugly so that's not a size you came up with. Nice. I don't honestly. I'm not sure how they came up with the size. Okay. She only worked on this with the. Um, sign designer. Do you have it on there? David, well, David, Davis. Oh, oh yeah. Four, David. Oh, that's <laughs> the existing sign, yeah. But where does she, does she have that other slogan anywhere? Maybe I've not. I've never seen it. Maybe not. I know it's on their website and all their communication, but oh. mm -hmm. maybe not. Thank you. I think that the, 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 it's too small. Anyway, it's only two and a, two and a quarter inch. Like the, the bare bookstore itself. I think that needs to be larger, anyways. Yeah, take the whole composition so of delete the that words and the book and, and enlarge, enlarge this to the max. Yeah. 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 We were, Reed and I were just saying that the, the uh, proportion of the font is, is good as it is. I don't even know if you need to um, increase that. But when you delete the, the like slogan, yeah, it's going to become, become yeah. very, and then slide down, yeah. it might look book. kind of small. No? The you book can keep the book. Oh, keep the book fine. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 yeah that, that's an important yeah. That, That's the... <coughs> 
No, I agree. Well, I can discuss that with Sheila and then recirculate something. Okay. No, and then on the um, on the window on the windows. Do you want to let me know if it's okay to put? Okay. What are the working books? Yeah, there's, yeah. there's okay. no issue. Okay. <coughs> yeah, so the inside of the window, that's fine. Okay. And in some ways, it seems appropriate there. You get yeah. a little bit more information. The, the sign, the hanging sign, hang grabs you, and then you. Yeah. You, yeah. You, yeah. 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 Like See, I have a vision that, like, in the future, when we do the project, we actually like go kind of Newport style, and we have like, you know, a hanging sign that looks like a book. Mm -hmm. Or like you know, mm -hmm. like the like the apothecary with the mortar exactly. and pestle. Oh, yeah. Like I want to yeah. get like more creative on those when we get to that yeah. phase. Uh -huh. The cobbler, right? Or a shoe uh, or boot. Hanging boot. Right. He's hanging in with us. He is. Mm -hmm. Giovanni retired. <coughs> That's great. Um, very sad. His seamstress went to work at Socari though. To where? The the, the, the custom dress stuff. store. So his seamstress is working at Sukari, so they're doing oh, alterations now. Yeah, they, they try to communicate that, but... Good. Didn't hear that. Just one more question. The, the decal over the doors, is that... Um, are they including business hours there? I can't... Or the, uh, it's uh, great if they are. Business hours or phone number. Yes. I, is yeah. that what that yeah, is? Yes, it's Monday through Friday. Okay. Yeah. Yep. Okay. It's on here on page uh, four. Or whatever. Yeah, I still can't. Mm -hmm. Okay, but good. Okay. That's big. Yeah. It's a big store. Yeah, a lot of space. She has a lot of space, and she wants Good. a lot of space. So. Good. No Amazon books in Darien. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. How much can I see? Okay. Yeah, I can remark that and recirculate it to you. Yeah, email to to Keating, and okay. he'll, he'll give us a timeline to uh, approve that administratively. Okay. Great. Thank you so much. Well, yeah, thanks for having me. It's really, job. yeah, we're going to, we'll be seeing you guys hopefully soon with um, <laughs> a yeah. lot of detail on the. Uh, Can you give tenants. us an update on the timing of your corporate because everyone asked? Yeah, so um, you know, as you know, we got the last of the town approvals that we needed um, in November. Okay. Um, we were a little worried about the possibility of a delay from the affordable housing piece of the project. Okay. So the appeal period ended in December, so we were all clear with the town. And then once we were all clear with the town, then we could file with the state. If you remember when um, Whole Foods got built, those of you who were around here then, um, when you build more than 200 parking spaces on a state highway, you have to go through another level of scrutiny of, and process with the state because you're considered a generator of traffic. So that's when, for example, when Whole Foods was built, they had Whole Foods basically improve that exit 11 ramp and, and improve the functionality of the ramp. So because we're on a state highway, Unlike the folks, that, like these guys coming out of um, Marotten Heights Federal, like they don't have to deal with that. But we are in the process. So we went to the DOT. We had a meeting with them a couple of months, a month and a half ago with Jamie Stevenson, Jeremy, um, Captain Anderson from the police department. We went through everything. We're fighting with them a little bit. I shouldn't say fighting. We are negotiating um, the traffic calming that we want to put forward because we would like to kind of, and it's what our plans reflected, we want to have narrower slightly narrower roads to slow the traffic down so that pedestrians feel more comfortable walking around downtown. Um, we also, uh, working with the town, put into the application the um, request for a mid-block crosswalk from about Kennedy's across the post road without a traffic light. And to be candid, like nobody thought that the state would approve that, but um, they recognized the importance of increasing the pedestrian <coughs> circulation, making people feel safe and making it easier for people to walk around, and it looks like they're going to give us that approval. So we're just waiting. We're supposed to get a, a formal letter from the state this week, which will tell us like how close we are. They want us to cut four feet out of the sidewalk. Wow. They want us to widen the road wow. and cut four feet out of our proposed sidewalk, which, you know, as we explained to them, I think with you, I know with zoning, it was a big discussion because a lot of people feel that some of the buildings downtown that got built were built too close to the sidewalk or too close to the curb. And so we don't want to compromise on that. So we're, you know, negotiating with the state, and I think it'll it'll work out. So if if it stays on track as we're told, um, we should have our DOT approval in um, June. But we'll know where we are in the next month, and then we're tying up all the loose ends to kind of gear up and get started, you know, later this year. But we're out talking to a lot of tenants and 
restaurants, retail, fitness concepts, and we're getting a really, really, very, very good response. And from some really cool, like, local meat stores um, that, you know, aren't going to be in the mall. So it's pretty interesting. Because the mall is, you know, go barreling down the road, yeah. as you can see. Yeah, it's happening. It's I've great. always, um, myself, wondered why there had never been a pedestrian crosswalk at the post office. It seems so perilous that there's, yeah. that, that people are going to and fro to the building. Yeah. And cars are flying down Corbin. Across the street. Across the street. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I recently was down in East Hampton, and they just put in their crosswalks in the village. Um, it's just terrific. And Princeton has it, too, these blinking lights in the pavement. So we're doing that yeah, on the Post I Road. I think they do. Uh, we're not. We didn't propose it for down there. Yeah. Um, we have the bump outs. Like, we remember, if you recall on our site plan, we have the two... Um, connections that will connect Corbin Drive to the uh, municipal parking lot behind 1020. Mm -hmm. So there's two crosswalks actually on Corbin Drive. Oh, yeah. mm -hmm. And um, you know, we didn't think, honestly, we didn't think about putting beacons there because we kind of figured the traffic was gonna be slower there. But on the post road, mm -hmm. the DOT proposal that we put forward has the beacon. So when, the, when, when you enter the crosswalk, the lights go on. Yeah, because there won't be a traffic light. They're in the, they're in the pavement. Embedded in the pavement. Did you see these at night? Yes. Because um, too bright. Darien Country Club. They have a place where they have a curb mm -hmm. and they have lights down in the ground yeah. below it to supposedly. But I'll tell you, it blinds you. Okay. Mm -hmm. When it comes up at you, that might not have been done. You though. can't see. That yeah. might not have been done though, in accordance with like. Yeah, the I'm not sure. I have to. I'd have to I don't know. That. I mean, I just. Yeah, this is the state yes. spec. I mean, it's yeah. what they put yeah. everywhere, wherever they do these. And the town has been really excited because what they kind of said is, once we've done this, they're, they're open to allowing the, them to happen in other parts of the post road. Mm -hmm. So, you know, trying to make it safer for people to cross the road, you know, would be great. Yeah. But well, we'll I'll have to look at those ones. It's a country coming area. I don't, I don't, I'm not, a, I, I mean, I've been there at night, but I never really noticed it. Room. You know where you're going to yeah. the Yeah. Okay, thank you so much. Thank you. I don't know. It's like, you're welcome. It's very nice. Yeah. That's very nice. Yeah. yeah. I mean, when I mean, you, maybe you, they you sit there, there okay. and you all okay. get in your life. Thank you all so much. Okay, we'll, we'll, we'll see you. We'll okay. okay. see you at the later. Yeah, okay, guys. Um, Take care. Next up is ARB number 7, 2019. It's Bon Bon Hair Studio at 841 Austin Post Road. Hi. Hi, everybody. How are you? Hello. Good to see you. Sorry about that. There's a few projects all in one Neil? Neil. My nickname. Uh, Nijat Aslan is my real name. Aslani. A-S-L-A-N-I. Yep, I gotcha. Any X-H-A-T? Yes. That's how you spell your name? Uh, I spell it uh, Nijat. N-A? N-E-X-A. Okay, oh, yeah, any e X. Yeah, okay. But you go by Neil? Neil. Okay. Neil Alright, so today I'm here to present my sign. Great. Yeah. Wall sign and a plate sign. Okay, so are you the um, owner of the owner? Okay. Great, let us know. Alright, so pretty much everybody has the pictures. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. And the name of the business. Everybody get it? Uh huh. It's a bon bon. <laughs> so, well, this is where it's the last bond. Cool. It did take me a little while to. <laughs> yeah. well, that's, that's, that's my designer's proposal. So he said, yeah. it will look great. Just a, yeah. just a minute, though, wasn't it? Very creative. <laughs> uh, so the, the background is going to be wood. Okay. Uh, it's one inch, but usually it's three quarters. Uh, norm, I will use pine wood with a rustic look. And the letters are going to be acrylic, half an inch, black uh, matte finish. It's going to be such two inches away. Unpaired. Unpaired, yes. Like lantern, right? Um, the big letter is going to be seven inches. Okay. And the smallest one is going to be three inches. They're going to fit in a... 12 inches in total, and uh, 80 inches. 
Um, question on the uh, the wood, the reclaimed wood vacuum panel. So that's just going to be a natural finish. Is it going to be left to weather, or are you going to stain uh, gonna, it? I'm going to stain it. I'm going to okay. stain it. The stain is going to be weather washed. Okay. A rustic, the weather washed. Um, so is that will that be more gray then, or will uh, it be? no? Because the way it's depicted there is very yeah, it's woody. You know, very woody. It's going to be maybe a bit more darker, like okay. brownish. But still, it's going to be lighter. Okay. Did you say that they're applied pin levers? So they're in, in this rendering, it's the pulled from Pulled the out, base. yeah, two so inches. So some shadow there. Yes. Okay. I don't know how this is existing mm -hmm. right now. Mm -hmm. Are you taking the spot? It still says coffee. Oh, okay. Are you taking that space, too? Okay. That Co is your space, right? The co You're taking yes, all co co yeah. Okay. Yeah. Currently shown as one. Yeah, this is yeah. currently how it is now. Okay. Yeah. It looks nice. I like the wood vacuum. Mm -hmm. okay. So, what do you do with the windows? Uh, windows, uh, we're just gonna remove everything. What it is by now. I mean, letters. These. These. The are frosted. Right. Yeah. Okay. Go so just the clear, full. Clear. You know, windows, top to bottom. Mm -hmm. I like that. It's nice. About this one, this question. Um, the lighting. The lighting, uh, it's existing one. I'm going to use the existing one. Okay. It shows a little, but it's mm -hmm. yeah. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. One, one clarification. Just this perspective just shows the Bondon no hair studio and then. Um, I'm sorry again. Oh, so this the elevation, the front elevation shows hair studio. Hair studio? On bond and then the oh yeah, uh, we used that one because a uh, designer did, did something else before, yeah. and then we just used that picture just to create a blade sign. That's only for blade. Oh, the one so with just pop yeah. Design. So yeah, just so both for the bond bond hair. Studio. Both yeah. And no stars on the. The, uh, no stars, no. Oh, okay. yeah. But still the single star on the side. Uh, actually, we're going to take off the star, too. On the, on the blade? So it's going to be yeah, on, on the blade sign. So the blade sign dimensions are 24 by 18. Yes, right. I'm planning to print the color of paint if it's possible to get it done by a laser which the guy said we're gonna check it out at the printing place because they said we gotta ask do they do laser painting in uh, this kind of wood sorry to, you, to, to see if you could actually engrave it into the wood yes okay. like burn is, is like a burning it or uh, Almost like if it's black. It's, it's, it's almost it's like, like a burn, yeah. But if it's not possible in this kind of wood, then I'm gonna just paint it. Okay, extensive. Yeah, same uh, black. Okay. Matte finish. Okay, so just so I can get up to speed on this, you said that on the face of the building there's no stars, and it says hair studio. Is that correct? Correct. Okay, and then on the blade sign. We're um, we gonna take it off the star too. It's gonna be bomb on hair studio. No star. No star. And no hair studio. Yeah, it's gonna be no hair, hair studio, studio. Just no no star. Okay. All right, good. Great. Is the address number anywhere on the building? Address number? Yeah. I don't believe so. Yeah, you need that. If you, um, yeah, if you could perhaps put it on the door, on, on the, the glass door? or something. Yeah. It's always a good idea to identify. By address, people looking, you know, with GPS, oh, etc. Yeah. I didn't pay attention on that. <laughs> it helps people. It may be, it, maybe on there? the door. No, I don't think it is. I don't see it there. Yeah. yeah. Put it in white so it's visible on the visible, glass. Visible, yeah. I may, I may have a wood one somewhere. For example, here on the corner here, on the window. A small one. Uh, just the numbers, yeah. Yeah, I just mean, the number. Like eight for one. It's helpful for your clients. Of course. Well, I didn't 
Open the door. There's, it doesn't exist on each one. Yeah. yeah. Open the door. Over, over the, the door, door here? I mean, around the door. So on on the, door. the door? Around the door. It's usually where people look for it. Yes. It's kind of like on the door there. Upside down by the door, too, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Good point, yeah. Come on in. The entrance is busy. Can you look at the detail of what is green today, the mullions, and how you would attach a wood panel? Would you take the white panel off? Mm, the no. No, usually it's. Yeah. Okay. Applied. Yeah. Uh, well, <coughs> as you can see, it's a an inch mm-hmm. here difference, so okay. it's gonna fit pretty good in there. Okay. It's so not gonna, so the wood is it won't stick, stick out. Beyond. Okay. Okay. It'll actually be pretty flush. Flush. Mm-hmm. 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 Good. Yeah. Anything else, guys? Can you say probably test that? Test your stain color just so it doesn't go through dark or else. We'll get a contrast to black mm-hmm. letters. Yeah, um, I found some pretty good stains. Good. Mm, they're weather washed, so yeah. the wood looks pretty rustic. Cool. And we have time to see which one is going to fit good, but yeah. we're going to stick with this one. Good. Light. Awesome. Thank you so, so much. You take, take these decals off unless you're serving. Yeah, everything good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You can use them with the frosting too yeah. on the, the decals. Thank you. Cool. Great job, Neil. All right, so okay. if you guys want to see a samples of uh, acrylic? Mm-hmm. Yeah, they're going to be half an inch. Mm-hmm. We've got a couple of pieces here that give you the new. And this is the matte finish. Right? Matte finish, yeah. Mm-hmm. As long as the wood doesn't get too dry, like yeah. Says, which is okay. Well, this is not finished. Oh, yeah, exactly. Yeah. But yeah, same idea. He loves samples. That's great. <laughs> yeah, would have would have been good to have stain up um, applied to the wood. Yeah, yeah. Sample yeah. Just, stain. just I think taking the recommendation to keep it a little on the lighter side. It's probably be to your benefit. All right. Okay, you got a paper report by the board. Everyone's happy. So you'll get a letter from me. Uh, in the meantime, go ahead and you can start your work. All right. Yeah. Thank you very much, guys. Mm-hmm. Have a good night. Thank, Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Okay. See you later, guys. All right. Bye, All right, guys. Moving on. It's uh, Next up is the North Heights Signage Program presented by Federal Realty. Do you want them to come in or do you want to do the uh, Mather Homestead? The Mather Homestead here? Yep, yep, Lauren's here. And I think it'll be fairly quick. That's yeah, right. that's great if, if, if they're here. Okay. Okay. Lauren, do, Lauren, why don't you come in? <laughs> We're going to do a psych agenda jump into uh, uh, Airbnb number 8, uh, 2019, the Mother Homestead. They're proposing a sign, I believe, and not. Uh, okay. Hello. How are you? Hi, welcome. Hi. Thank you. Yeah. Um, it's your first time here, right? It is. Yes. 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 I've been to PNZ before, but you're actually going to see, I think, see us a number of times over the next few months. Um, yes. But tonight, I'm here about a sign. Introduce yourself and tell us how you relate to the Mather Homestead and then what you're looking to do. Okay, great. Um, I'm Lauren Swenson. I'm the executive director of the Mather Homestead. If you're not familiar with the Mather Homestead, we are a new historic home in town um, up at the corner of Stephen Mather and Brookside Road. Well, um, why your last name for me? S W E N S O N. Okay. Um, and we would like a sign so that people can come find us when they come to take tours. <laughs> um, it's pretty simple. Um, so you can see, I think, in the packet that you have here, the proposed sign. Um, we are not trying to break the mold with this. We actually took pictures of the DCA sign and the Darien Historical Society, and we want to stay within that same sort of historical vein. Mm-hmm. Um, so you see the sign here. I hope I get the terminology right. I think it's a blade sign, is that correct? Um, it's made by, um, signed by Anthony, which you know, makes a lot of these, and it's done um, both of those other signs. You can see the year at the top. It says the Mather Homestead, um, and it says the address. And the address is very important to us because we have two entrances, one on Brookside and one on Stephen Mather. You actually enter via the Brookside direction, so it's just confusing when people try to GPS um, to us, which is how most people get to us right now. Um, So our proposal that you can see in that map, and I have some pictures here, um, is to put the sign in this, it'll be on the property behind the fence, but to put it in this corner, 
so that it's closest to the corner of Stephen Mather and Brookside. And that way you can see it either way you're coming. I think that what this will do is what's happening now is people are actually going to 19 Stephen Mather Norwalk, which is only three houses down this way. Luckily, we're friendly with the Malitzi family who lives there, and they turn people around. But I think this will prevent that from happening, whichever direction you're coming. Um, it's a white wood sign. They did give me some materials. This would be painted white. Um, this is the actual wood used for the sign, which would also be painted white. The letters would be black. There are no lights. And a white pole. Um, a white pole, yes. So imagine this painted white. Um, I think that's, I think that's really it. Are you going to light it at all? Or we were not planning to light it. We're not really open at night. Um, and I think that people's headlights at that corner would be, um, you know, would be sufficient. Yeah. Um, so no, we don't really see a need to. Are you trimming it in black to match the letters, or is it just white? Um, I believe it is just white, or that is the intention, anyway. Let me see. That's kind of nice It's kind of like a double line. Is it a double line? Yeah, let me look. Um, my intention oh, yeah. is for it just to be, just to be white. Yeah, I don't. I, I can ask about that, but we would. I think we would prefer for it to be white, um, all the way around. Again, just to stay in that same, you know, sort of vein of how all these signs look. Are the other ones in the historical mm -hmm. society? And I have pictures of those too, if you want to take a look real quick. Um, yeah, does the historic society? dictate any of this, you know, the arrangement of the information or? <laughs> no, they do not. Um, oh, as far as where we put the, the year versus the address, I mm -hmm. actually looked at other historic home signs to see how they did that. I mean, sure. that was how most people did it. Okay. Um, so you can see there's the DCA sign, very similar. They have their logo on there. We're not going to do that. And there's the Darien Historical Society. So there's just a little more ornate, but same mm -hmm. idea. I think there's a little bit older. Um, mm -hmm. Right. So. Yeah. Um, I think that's that's everything. We'll have a complimentary sign just on our little front gate that says entrance on Brookside, and that is just it's a very small, like ten by twelve sign that'll just be you know right on the on the front um, picket fence, and that's just to prevent people from parking there and trying to walk in, so that they'll go pull around on Brookside. That hasn't been a problem so far, but just in case. Do you imagine that the sign runs parallel to Brookside or parallel to Stephen Mather? Or I was actually diagonal? imagining it diagonal. It's going to be okay. double-sided, mm -hmm. um, but that way you could read it from both sides. It's a great question. We, we sort of waffled with that one mm -hmm. as well. That's a great question. Any other questions? No? I like the date, though. I mean, we never would allow date, but this is, I think, this is an appropriate sign, obviously, a very appropriate sign. Have something like that. Thank you. Historical significance. What else? Anything else, guys? Mm -mm, looks great. So I think you're going to be. Great. I hear you guys are also tearing down the shed. Yes, it's a barn. And we're not barn. <laughs> thank you. Proper barn. And so you will be back here in April. We would like have... to come back April 23rd. Our architect okay. couldn't join us tonight, unfortunately, and I don't want to misrepresent his work. Um, okay. But we would be building also a barn. Okay. We had to hope to keep the original barn, and it's just not possible due to some termite damage and the the like the way we would want to configure things inside. Okay. Um, but Marion is coming to visit us next Wednesday. Right. I'll be with that. Oh, you will. Okay, great. Yeah, I think um, either the builder or the architect is going to try to join us next Awesome. Week. That'd yeah. be fantastic. So we can kind of talk you through the idea then and then bring the official designs in April. Yeah. Okay, cool. Great. All right. Well, Thank you very much. Nice yeah. to meet you all. Do you live in town now or are you? I do. I live um, I live in the Delta Island neighborhood, so okay. other side of town. Like this. Awesome. Yeah. <laughs> All right, guys. Last up, this time for real, will be the uh, Federal Realty's presentation of the Norton Heights Signage Program. Our third and hopeful final visit to the signage program. Maybe. <laughs> Chris, we're actually on television tonight. Oh, yeah. So okay. I'm going to have you, uh, uh, you guys introduce yourselves. Yeah, say absolutely. your name's record and um, try maybe even a little background. Mm -hmm. Oh, sure. Do you want us to set up uh, set up on an easel? Would that be just... That would be lovely. Do you have your easel with yeah, you? Yeah, we do. Okay.
sorry for the deluge of exhibits from the last meeting. And here is our markup of the last time we were here, the design guidelines. We highlighted them again. Now all the issues we talked about at the last meeting. Oh, I'm sure. Yeah, sure. Let's okay. start. Okay. And so, would you like me to just uh, start with an overview of why we're here? Uh, or sure. Yeah, oh, yes, yeah, sure. Your, your representation for the Yeah, sure. <laughs> uh, Chris Cole, um, representing Federal Realty and uh, um, Commons at Norwood Heights. And Peter Pitzer uh, with Streamwork Studio. Uh, P I T Z E. Everyone here at Work for Straight Work Studio. I don't think I put that together. Uh -huh. The first time that we. No, no, it's great. I, I don't think I ever put that in my records since I just said that. All right. So um, we're here uh, this evening. I believe this is the third time we've been in front of the board mm -hmm. uh, for the alternative um, sign guidelines. And under the last um, sign guideline regulation change from PNZ, which changed the sign guidelines for the entire town. There's a um, section inside the code for larger projects that are coming in for an alternative sign program. And so with Federal Realty, um, with all of our projects, we really try to create this uh, sign guideline so when tenants come in, there's a really strict uh, adherence to what you can and can't do. And so for us, it's really about the feel of the projects. The signs are one part of the project. It's the landscaping and the architecture. We feel like all of that comes together to make it, you know, how you feel when you approach the project, when you're in the project, when you're leaving the project. And so um, we've been working uh, for several months with the ARB, really, with our initial um, sign guide program that we um, took. We have it some of the other shopping centers, but really took it and, and got it, uh, made it specific to Darien was sort of our starting point of knowing the scale, which is extremely important to us, is making sure this pro the, the project feels like it fits within the neighborhood in the community. So we started there, and then over the last three meetings, we sort of had, had a discussion uh, about what you know, should be changed and, and how it actually impacts um, Visually, you from the street, a car, walking as a pedestrian, on the sidewalk, looking up, and uh, all the different types of lighting for the, the project itself and the signage as well. And we've gone through um, uh, different distances, I think, which, which to us was really important because unlike, uh, and the reason that I think um, PNZ uh, brought up the alternative sign program was that in, in all these, uh, some of the larger projects, there's a lot of different conditions that don't really meet specific, uh, meet the specific uh, regulations within um, the new sign ordinance. And so we went about a study of showing how far our, uh, the buildings are from both Edgerton, West, uh, Neroton, and Heights. And in many cases, it's Five, six hundred feet from some of the street, and so, <laughs> given uh, how far you are from the street, uh, we tried to show some different sign proportions and sign studies um, to show how uh, you would see it from both the street and as you got closer to the project. We we went out and actually took letters um, of different sizes, put them on buildings, and started out at the street, and then started walking in at fifty and hundred foot increments, and then presented that I believe on the first evening. Uh, so tonight, I believe, reflects our conversation from our last meeting, um, which um, I believe we're in agreement with most of the items, but we thought what would probably be most helpful 
like I believe we've done in the last two meetings, is sort of walk through it, the changes, make sure that we uh, caught all of the comments that you had and reflected them correctly in the guidelines. Great. Sounds yeah. good. Thanks for the overview. Sure. So, Peter, do you want to sure. go through them? We're looking at the alternative sign program. It's just the first page that we already have some highlights. So we've made some alterations. Some of the comments from the previous meeting. Okay. I'm just going to go over the highlights because there's a lot of pages here and a lot of highlights. So okay. we'll focus on those since we're in a bit of one. Yeah, I should say some of the things we highlighted were items that. Um, were brought up as questions last time that they weren't in there, mm -hmm. um, but they were in there, so we just highlighted them just to go through them one last sure. time. Yeah, to make sure everyone's clear on what's in there. Great, great. And anything not highlighted hasn't been changed from the last meeting. Uh, it's been through three, uh, also our third yes. round of changes, yeah. so yes, we, we've we reflected it. Once we kind of all agreed, we sort of went to a black line on it. Yeah. So this first page uh, is kind of a, an introduction. The highlights include Signage is limited to a business's legal name and the logo. Um, the blade signs, plaque signs, window signs, those signs may also include uh, a brief descriptive tagline of the service or product, but it's limited to that. Uh, and then window signs, uh, they're allowed to have uh, some information about contact information, business hours, uh, the, the kind of specifics that you might see on the door when you walk into a storefront. That's limited to the glass on the entry doors. So location specific and also content specific for kind of that particular one. Okay. The next page, we're on page three. We had a discussion regarding the number of signs, which we've quantified it down to an exact number to a particular space. So in this case, for inline tenant spaces were limited now to two particular sign types. That's just the number. Within those sign types, there are specific limits throughout the rest of the guideline that kind of guide letters, and this may sound like I'm kind of repeating myself, but uh, just to go over it again for anyone who wasn't here last time. So inline tenants are two sign types. Corner space tenants are limited to three signs, and anchor tenant spaces, which are 7,500 square feet or above. They're usually very large tenants need a little bit more visibility, uh, they're limited to four signs. So if I'm assuming just one minute, is, is this text correlating with Exhibit A? Is now the time for me to comment on Exhibit A? Exhibit A is actually specific to the residential signage. Uh, okay, so there, there are special uh, instances for the residential signage, just specifically okay. for these entries. There, there's only two of them. On yeah, the site. and we'll get there. I think from the last Four meeting, there were yeah. specific comments on both adding the monument sign to the monument sign section rather than right. precedent images, and the same thing with um, the residential piece. So, it's yeah, just a general overview. Yes, right, exactly. Then we'll we'll get to that we'll get further. To a, later. Is yes, there a correlation between linear linear feet and and the anchor tenants versus the um, corner tenants, is it tenants, or inline tenant? I mean... We had discussed that the last time, and it seemed like it was a bit cumbersome for that to start to limit the, the amount of signage. So now we heard your thoughts on the amount of signage limit, so we just did a straight number. Now there is a linear distance to square footage for the individual main signs, which also reflects a similar uh, restriction that's in the current dairy and sign uh, program. So it's uh, 0.33 square feet per linear foot. Uh, something that's already adopted in your guideline that we've put in here. Yeah. But the amount of signage is limited in the number, but it doesn't have to do anything with the linear feet, just based on inline, corner, or anchor. Can then, you have a corner, I guess what I'm asking is, can you have a corner tenant that's as large as an anchor tenant square footage? A uh, an anchor tenant could take up a corner space, essentially. Yeah. That's possible. But they would be limited to an anchor tenant uh, number of signage. They're restricted to the anchor tenant aspect. But you wouldn't have an, a corner tenant. <laughs> we wouldn't add that the That was 7,500 square feet. 
that wasn't an, wasn't an anchor tenant. If it's 7,500 square feet or above, we consider them an anchor tenant. So the square footage does delineate who is an anchor tenant. Yes, sorry, yes. It okay. Yeah, just for anchors. All the other ones are based on location. And by four awesome. signs too, because I know not everyone was here at the last meeting or through all the different hearings, but it doesn't mean four signs like Bob's shoes, Bob's shoes, Bob's shoes. It's the facade sign, one facade sign, one blade sign, for instance, for the inline tenant, and that's it. And for the corner tenant, it's one ten one sign on either side and a blade sign. So it's. So you wouldn't say that they all the corner tenant or, or or the anchor or corner tenant would have four signs. No, it wouldn't actually. As a matter of fact, the corner tenants are limited uh, to, to three. three. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I think we put this in there as a max, like yes. we, to make yes. sure like we that we, we agreed on the maximum mm -hmm. they had, and they could then so choose to only have two mm -hmm. or one. Sure, right. case should have. Wow. Yeah, absolutely. And it's not uncommon for that to happen, but we don't want anyone to think that they can have too many signs. And we're also reviewing all these, so this was sort of like the maximum is when people are picking and choosing, but like Peter said, not everyone does that, and we're also limiting it and reviewing it ourselves. So we're saying, geez, that doesn't feel like quite the right proportion or the right use of this sign in this place, and we write comments back to all the tenants, no matter who they are, and send comments back. So we're trying to balance within this too, and this is like an overall guideline for tenants to come back to us with because we don't want people coming in with 48 inch letters and you know signs all over the windows and five blade signs and like a lot of tenants would want to come in. Mm -hmm. And if they do, we have the exact letter of the law here to be able to tell them this is what we've agreed upon and this is not what's permitted here and it gives us the ability to get nicer signage at Darien and on this project. Okay. Okay. Um, you guys this point, if it helps, I have reference. I don't know if you guys have copied the letter I sent them that included every one of our revisions. So they are going through line by line in order of um, through the pages of what our our latest requests were. Um, I have about ten bullets that we sent them. That was bullet number one that they just covered. <laughs> so I am tracking what we we are going kind of going through this in a very structured manner. Is bullet two? Under sign limitations. Like, yes, yes, excellent. All right. <laughs> We're on schedule. Mm -hmm. So signs facing a residential district shall not be illuminated after 11 p.m. We also discussed that any signage that must be operational past 11 p.m., that the signs illumination gets turned down by 50%. All sign illumination shall comply with the recommendations of a lighting specialist and the dark sky association member. Mm -hmm. And that's our lighting specialist is... Um, does have that certification. Mm -hmm. So would this be considered dark sky certified or just somebody with dark sky certification? Mm -hmm. It's Dark sky is uh, an association that people become members of to kind of uh, go after the common goal, and usually lighting designers. So I'm not sure that a certification is possible, but someone who has the ideals of dark sky. Yeah, so I would you say dark sky strategy. Have been important. Yes, and I believe uh, at the second meeting we submitted a letter from our dark sky specialist, basically who did the lighting for the whole project and it is all dark sky compliant. compliant yeah. um, said that, in her opinion, she sits on the Greenwich board as well, uh, um, architectural review board. Um, she felt that signs are de minimis as far as the lighting goes is de minimis in. in in comparison to every other light, she'd actually hadn't heard the question before. She went in, looked at the lumens that were on there, and she said it doesn't cast off anything that would be like that. But she would also, if someone came in with some crazy bright sign, we'd certainly, she would red flag that, and we would as well. Your first point says signs may be illuminated by continuous lights. Oh, that just means um, they're not like broken up lights or flashing lights. Okay. It's just a, okay. a continuous glow of light. Okay. No strobes or sirens or anything mm -hmm. like that trying to catch attention. And my own question on this is we talked about the security lighting, lighting that would be remaining on all night long yes. for security. And you were running that by PNZ. Did PNZ sign off on that? Did you guys discuss yeah, that? Yeah, we have a 
um, a lighting plan that was approved, which has by BMG. Yes. Okay. Great. And uh, yes, and we and also approved by West Street as well. We went and got everyone on board with that. Okay, great. So, moving over to monument signs on page five. So here we placed in the exact signage um, concept that we're, we're planning on using uh, at the entrances. And, um, yeah, and these were the signs we showed P and Z, uh, and they. Um, and we're here that they said they didn't have, uh, they actually they wanted your review of them, but this, these are the signs that have been consistent throughout the project. Right, so as we, uh, we left it that we wanted to see um, specific signs, because we they, they were just general conversation and we wanted to see something specific to approve, and also know the exact number of signs that we would be talking about. Right. That's how we left it, yeah. And we're proposing two, one at Edgerton and one off of Heights at the main drive, basically right where very close to where the pylon sign with which shows stop and shop and Walgreens is. And we, we noted the height that it wouldn't be any higher than six feet right now. Our height, uh, the, the pylon sign that's there, which has two tenants names on it, is up to the basically uh, about eight feet tall. So the quality of this sign which seems much nicer than what is out there now, certainly. And we reduce the size of the sign on Edgerton just because it's a, a smaller street and feels more pedestrian. And so this, and um, the letters would be uh, five, ten, five letters mm -hmm. on both. Yeah, yes. individual letters are required. Okay. We have that as a line item to okay. make sure that it's nothing bad. And just to cover the quality, letters should be of high quality materials, preferably metal or solid cut. The highlights there are what Chris had mentioned regarding the locations of the sign and the maximum of one sign per location. And if there's an existing wall, uh, it shall be no higher than six feet above the wall's origin. What does that mean, above the wall's origin? So where the the, the wall starts, you, you can see in the example you mean um, like at the above bottom. the grade of the sidewalk, is that what you mean? Well, the, the grade, since there are grade changes yeah. on site, it's kind of tough to say at grade because it could mean zero, it could mean grade at another location. So we just thought it would be appropriate to put it at the wall's origin, so the base of the, the wall. The base, yeah. okay. Is there any uh, lighting on, on the monument side? Uh, it does, I believe, have the potential to be lit, but it would um, be halo it, lit, lit. Yeah, probably yeah. halo lit is what we do yes. there. So it's not a soft light. Mm -hmm. Or it can, uh, we also have it listed here that it can be lit from below, which would be small lights that cast up to the wall that the sign is on, which is relatively. Like a little landscape, wall lights or something. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Oh, I see. I'm still stuck on this. So you mean the wall possessive origin? Wall apostrophe S? You are right, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still posting on that. Okay, all right, I no feel problem. better. We okay. will put that in there. Thank you for uh, <laughs> noticing that. It's very all right. So for the awning signs, we uh, had limited awning signs in our last meeting and thought about what else we might be able to do or what is out there on, in Darien Town now. And uh, we discussed doing uh, one sign on the awning uh, per tenant frontage. So it, that means if there are three awnings that are decorative there, there's only one of them that can have an actual sign. Um, however, there are an exception for uh, a small logo. That logo is restricted to one square foot, and that can be placed um, on the awnings themselves. If there are three awnings, it will have a small logo on them. Uh, and the sign on the awning is included in the total tenant sign type allowance. So if an inline tenant, which is permitted to have two signs, uh, if they wanted to do an awning sign, that counts towards one of those signs. Uh, the small logos, however, do not count towards that signage. So they could have logos on the awnings, but it wouldn't count against them towards their sign type. And what happens to the skirts? Does that count? Uh, if 
you want to have a low uh, a sign on the skirt, the drop. Sure, the sure, yeah. Uh, if there is a, a sign there, uh, a main sign, something that writes the company name out, mm -hmm. that would be count that as a sign, no matter where it's located on the owner. It's anywhere on the owner. Right, 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 yeah. Okay. right, right, right. yeah. And that fresh would be limited to one square foot. Do you count that as a logo? If it was a logo, it would be. The, I mean, on this. Yeah, I, here, I actually fresh. think that that would not be permitted because fresh is probably the name of that. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, so in that particular case, it would only be allowed to have one. Okay. But if it was their logo, like the Brooks Brothers it. Pig in downtown, that's on each one, that would be allowed. Uh -huh. But yeah. Brooks Brothers writing it out would. The canopy sign, which is on the next page, we had discussed mm -hmm. that those would uh, be on a case-by-case -case basis and require approval by the ARB. So we'd be coming back for any kind of canopy sign. Yeah, so we might give you a hard time with that logo definition to say, fresh, could they say this is our logo? Um, I don't know any other way to, to word it, but mm -hmm. Some people would say that whatever our signage is, is you know, considered our logo, even if it's just the word. Mm -hmm. That's an interesting thought. You know, could Fresh argue that this is you know, this is considered our logo, even though it's the words of their right? Company? I think it'd be an easy argument to say that's the name of your company. Yeah, and they would not a, a ask lemon it. squeezing. Or, yeah. yeah. Well, if it's a business name that's registered. And that would mm -hmm. qualify it as that. If it fits in one square foot, how bad it could be. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, we could just put like that, which should not That's be okay. cannot be a repeat of mm -hmm. the facade or the name on the primary. main facade, the primary sign. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, that sure. might be a good way to. Yeah. yeah, yeah. For safety. Yeah. Just, it's a great call, Dave. I was like, yeah, I forgot what that was. <laughs> Male and female. Right, exactly. Interesting. <clears throat> okay. All right. Yes. On the grade sign, we discussed a restriction on the thickness, which was five inches, and that anything that was thicker than five inches would be coming back to the ARB for any type of thicker sign or dimensional sign. Um, and we also discussed that the blade signs would not be internally lit, but if there was a tenant that really desired an internally lit blade sign, we would come back in for ARB review. Uh, that same note goes for the parallel blade signs, which would also be restricted by the same specifics. Overall thickness, no larger than five inches, and internally lit blades would be approval by ARB. Have you ever seen a five-inch thick uh, sign? It sounds so big. It, it, it does, it is, but yeah. um, the, uh, once you put the letters together, kind of the thickness oh. of both sides and then the thickness of the sign uh -huh. itself, okay. it tends to add up pretty quickly. Yeah. I think it's particularly if it got into a lighting situation, too, if it right. makes some internal mm -hmm. right. if, it, if it does have internal illumination, uh, we'll be back in. Could push it. Yeah, you yes. be there for both. Mm -hmm. The uh, window sign, which is on the next page, page 10, uh, the window signs are not included in the tenant type sign allowance, which just means that if an inline tenant can have two signs, the window signs themselves would not be included in that. And this is similar to some of the signage that's actually out in Darien Town now. Uh, Bodega, uh, Ford, Fish Market, and UCBC are all pictures uh, directly from the town. When you guys also added, which is good you didn't highlight it, you also added the 25%. I don't mm -hmm. believe that was in there before. Maybe it was. I, no, it was, it was a comment from the ARB yeah. on the last one. Yeah, yes. right. Yeah, well, it's not highlighted here, but that's great. It, it is included. Yes, this time. yes, absolutely. Mm -hmm. I think we might have covered that on the time before. Oh, really? Oh, maybe we okay. highlighted it the last Got time. Got it. So. Great. Next page, page 11. Uh, menu signs. Menu signs are for food establishment tenants only, but we discussed that 
if a non-Buddhist <coughs> tenant wanted a menu sign, uh, they would just have to go in front of the ARB for approval. So we'd come in to review that with you. Does that mean uh, something like a salon? Yeah. I think that's exactly what they Yeah, that was the example that they oh, said last okay. time, yeah. Yeah, Rita, you weren't here, but someone, uh, maybe Allison, you had a great idea that maybe like a spa or something might want to throw out like a manicure menu or something, right? Like a spa menu? Yeah. So, no, no, I don't okay. think some, like, yeah. Which would be like a creative use of, mm -hmm. what do you, menu. of a menu. menu. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Got it. Absolutely. And just to, for the inline tenants that might be looking for something like this, uh, the menu signs are not included in the tenant type sign allowance either. Yep. Sidewalk signs. For food establishment tenants only, and these would be permitted on a case by case basis, but do require the approval of the ARB. How does the town feel about that? standing signs, menus, you know? Standing signs? Standing. Sidewalk sign? I'm sorry, I missed the question. How does the town feel about uh, hmm. Signs on sidewalks. We don't want them on our sidewalks. If, a, oh. if an internal walkway uh, owner wants to allow them and accept that liability, that, that's their issue. But we don't want them on public sidewalks. Mm -hmm. yeah. We've seen them around on a number of different uh, nice, nice projects. Uh, mm -hmm. They're they're used by uh, coffee shops and bars sure. and restaurants. They're fairly nice. Sidewalks are big enough for a cafe area. They're big enough to uh, place a, an A-frame sign, sidewalk sign on. Oh, were you saying that that was odd because it's odd? We required that later. Um, approval? No, I just actually didn't even have a note about that. It's great. Okay. Yeah, we couldn't come up with a good, good example. The ones we had. Um, were a little too loose, I think, and mm -hmm. then we were trying to contain it. We just thought, we don't know what anyone's going to do, so it was just easier to come back before the board, and it's just the restaurant, so there's not going to be a lot of restaurants, right. mm -hmm. so it should be. Okay. So is that in zoning code, then, that sidewalk signs are not permitted on public sidewalks? Uh, there are a number of reasons why not, but we don't want these temporary signs. Right, so we this would only be in the case where it was allowed for zoning, that they would come to us. Well, th this is not for the Heights Road frontage, this or or the Edgerton Street frontage. It would be for the walkway directly in front of the store, almost as if it was in front of Stop and Shop's entrance. Kind of and that's considered there. But so. I, I think it's a bad idea. I think it's a bad precedent. That's why we say you can have a menu sign, and it's a fixed thing. You're not going to trip over it. It's not going to blow away. But is is but, so. The zoning not have jurisdiction, so to speak, because it's within that area? Or I really think you're saying zoning would say that you're not allowed to have a sidewalk sign, you know, on, on a public sidewalk, sidewalk. On a public mm -hmm. sidewalk, but is this considered a private sidewalk? Then? Right. It's a private sidewalk, and I, I think the operators of the shopping center are going to need to make that decision about do they want to even allow their tenants to possibly do it. And if, if the operator of the shopping center gets it, gives permission to the tenant, then the tenant still needs to come to ARB and say, well, this isn't going to obstruct the main walkway. This is tucked off to the side. It's adjacent to a planter. It's weighted down. It's not going to blow over the wind, that kind of thing, as opposed to it's just out there and it's obstructing for some reason. And these days, so many people have their head down <laughs> As they're walking, I think it's going to become more and more of a, an issue. Yeah, because they're so mobile, though, they could present it as being like next to a planter, but then it gets put two feet further out. Mm -hmm. And somebody trips over and they say, well, the ARB approved it. We're yeah. suing you guys. Huh? Yeah. So. It does up the total si signage, too, to three per tenant rather than two. I mean, yeah, because this, most this of doesn't these count are, the allowance, they're signs. I mean, yeah. you know. Mm -hmm. Right. We do have a location specific to where it belongs, which is um, no, yeah, adjacent to the entry or okay. to be located within the food establishment's designated cafe zone. Mm -hmm. So it's pretty tight to the entrance. 
Are you building what would be considered a public sidewalk on Edgerton Street and on Heights Road? Yes. Okay. Did we need to specify here sidewalks are permitted on private walks only on a case-by-case -case basis to avoid, I don't know. Yeah, yeah. we certainly can. We definitely wouldn't put them out there, so we have no issue with doing right. that. Yeah. yeah. Yes, we'll just note. Sidewalk uh, signs may not extend over any property line or public or private private right of way. Mm -hmm. Is that cover the concern? <coughs> they are the kind of thing though that all of a sudden do appear, you know. They do. Whether allowed or not. <laughs> We're pretty good about yeah. that. All of a sudden <laughs> Yeah, we, we that is one thing. We notice that too and then we have to have people pushing stuff out on the sidewalk like clothes or you yeah. know so unless they, there's a sidewalk sale going on, there's a specific permit with the, the uh -huh. town to have that, we're pretty good about enforcing that and saying, bring it back in, and the, within the leases, there's things you can and can't do. And so non-permitted signs, even within the windows, like if they wanted to start plugging signs up right after they opened and everything was approved, we have things within the lease, which are also, that's a violation of the lease, and then we send the tenants the letters and they take it down. But usually it doesn't happen. Usually they know what a restricted environment is, so they most people don't do that. Very proactive. Yeah. Page 13, we have hanging signs. We discussed that any tenant that wanted a hanging sign would also need to come in for a review uh, with the mayor. We don't even see them potentially, but just yeah. right, mm -hmm. just in case. Uh, murals and non-commercial graphics. Well, there's nothing on. There's nothing on temporary business signs. As we gloss over that, mm -hmm. we can have any changes. On okay. Sorry, I guess we have yeah. changes on every. Yeah, but those two in temporary <laughs> application pending signs, we can have any changes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> The mural non-commercial graphics uh, would be permitted on a case-by-case -case basis, but do require review and approval from the ARB. So we'll come back in with any of those ideas. Yeah. Uh, the next page is multifamily development signs on page 16. And this does coordinate directly with the Exhibit A. That you had mentioned. Yeah, so today we should pull it up because not I think no not everyone knows which where the entries are and it might just provide some better context. Uh, this or the sandy point? The sandy point. So guys, just as they set that up, just how we left it is we said we'd like to see a specific proposed signage here. Um, someone to uh, propose some sort of wall mounted plaque. Small. Kind of small, small plaque to kind of denote about. the residential sign, um, and we asked to provide the exact language, size, materials, that kind of stuff. Yeah. And so um, the two entries uh, to the residential, there's um, uh, 60 units above here, 60 units above here. The main entries to both uh, apartments are on either side here, and there's a, a strong walkway that's here. So if you're in the parking lot, we wanted something to sort of designate where that entry is if you were a guest coming in. All the residents are parking, there's a garage that goes <laughs> underneath, so most of the residents are parking underneath here. So that's, so the, there's only two locations where this um, would occur, which is right here and right here. And for that we're limiting the signage to a maximum of three signs. Um, and those would be the maximum signs shown below, um, a main sign, a blade sign, a black sign, maybe in lieu of a main sign, it's an awning sign, um, but we're limiting them to three different signs. Also limiting the total square footage of all of this signage to 32 square feet. Uh, that number is a pretty common number in uh, the existing sign regulations um, as a limit on the main sign itself is 32 square feet. This one sign limit is 32 square feet, not all three? Nope. All, uh, three. all three for all us. All three are 32 square feet total. Yeah, and here it was okay. 32 square feet for one sign. Got it. So, so this is kind sign, of a limited. schematic drawing, right? I'm, Very much. I keep wanting to um, not have the sign sitting on the transom. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like, uh, if you choose to put a sign, 
you, I would rather that it not be sitting on the mm -hmm. door trim. So that's just a schematic, right? Absolutely, but, yeah, yes. But, this is not the final design. This, okay, in, so. no, this is essentially just to show the approximate square footage that these signs might take up to get you comfortable with this is the entrance and this is approximately what. What, what are you saying, ready to go, go through it again? Oh, uh, well, see, this is some sort of a transom. Right. Um, and it seems to me that just design wise, I want the sign to be giving some more room above the door. It's sitting low. So you'd want to see it on the facade. I, well, I call it facade. It's not really the facade, but up top. On the, well, just it's kind of floating on top of the door. Mm -hmm. So I mean, I guess that was just my question: whether um, if some tenant is going to look at this and say, "Oh, okay, I'll mount my sign there." Well, it's, it's not the tenant. It'd be just us doing it's our you. own sign oh, okay. right. for the residents, and it's just in two locations. So we just call it the project name, and maybe have a little you know, established. What is the name? Are the names for the residential? Yeah, we haven't different? come up with the. Yeah, we're gonna. I don't know what the residence is at, or we haven't really got down to that level yet. But it, it will specifically say it, the residence, the residence at something that denotes that it's not a store, that it's an entry, and then we're gonna have to call it by building, but not building one, building two. That'll have a nicer name. Over the transmit, it, to me, it does look a little <coughs> commercial rather than residential, too. I mean, it. Mm -hmm. I don't think if I were living there, I would like it. You know, having a name like that above the entrance. I, mm -hmm. I, and I think we talked last time about just this little plaque on the side. It's possible. That I that mean, I think it. that's yeah. more appropriate somehow for me. I mean, um, you're blocking the transom glass. Yes. Yeah. So yeah, potentially. Yeah. But there's a possibility <coughs> that this might actually be um, a thicker member above the door, and the letters are individual letters. Oh, applied letters. So it's it's mm -hmm. there's there's a lot of room for a different sign design here, mm -hmm. and we're just we're just trying to make sure that you're comfortable with. Are they the going to have different addresses? Signs. Perhaps a number? I mean. It, yes, it, they they probably will. Just from a mailing address, just knowing there's going to be a mail room in each um, building. So maybe just even the number. If you're it identifying it for guests, I mean, That's only right. people that would have to know would be guests of the residence, really. Right. Um, there might be a 162 and it might be heights. Less res the inviting residence. the shoppers to kind of poke around and, you know, I don't know. I feel like we got, we've had some tentativity around this sign. Is there any chance we could do something where we, um, I know you guys have been here multiple times, you want to get this going, prove it. When you do have the final um, residential names and like the building yep. and the address, you could send it to us administratively that we could look one more time and see what sure. you guys end up doing, yep. like where it was placed on the building. Yep, absolutely. Would that, would that work for us? Give it one final view. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But we can, we can continue and get their stuff. Because mm -hmm. you're right, I mean, that it sets the tone. Mm -hmm. right. yeah. I think mm -hmm. big time. I yeah, think so it's, it's something too city-ish looking to me. Okay. This I don't know. I mean, I mean other than the sure. signage, is this the final design of the entrance to the residential building? Or? It's generally we we're still kind of working on fine tuning, and we we still have to come back uh, to the ARP anyway on all the, the facades anyway. So I, it's sort of a little so bit of a catch twenty two. I'm not sure. Yeah. We, we may have the signage done first. Right. Right. Okay. But we'll, if you we do it administratively, we might do it all at the same time. Yeah, whatever. I just want to—I want to keep it's your application yeah. moving. Okay. Pull up here, yeah. But I think it's something yeah. worth us seeing one more time. Sure, absolutely. Uh, yeah. Before it's yeah. finalized. Yeah. Yeah. The the limits here then are fine as it is. And <clears throat> yeah, I think yeah. This is I mean yeah. This is all the stuff we we talked about. The total like the sign allotment and the square footage. I think we're all yeah. Okay with. And you want to see mm -hmm. colors, materials with that as well when we submit it? Or, always. Uh, always okay. Yep. I mean, it, it, yeah. Yes. Okay. Ideally. Sounds good. Uh, the next page, 17, directory signs. This was another item that we discussed coming back to the ARB for approval. That's what's kind of moving forward a little bit. It was another one we just don't haven't quite figured out what we're doing yet, so we figured when we come in, we'll come with a whole sign program for you to review. Right. But you're confident there will be some directional, directory signs yes. on the site? Yes. 
Yeah, I think we were torn about, sorry, not to like beat this up, but we were really torn about directory signs. I mean, some of us, I mean, it wasn't directional as much as it was, um, what's the other name? When you, when you list everything inclusive, is oh, it everything like included? Like a directory. Like a, what do they call A directory, a directory versus yeah. directional. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, there was a picture in here specifically that I remember us being a bit attached to that maybe had a map on it, kind of very mall-like, but someone was standing in front of it had some. Right. And that very was the other reason yes. Yes. we uh, changed the yet. square footage <laughs> down to 15 square feet to make it a little more plain. Mm -hmm. I noticed Any I was example? in Westport the other day, and I noticed that it was a small center, but they had a directory sign, but they were all, the difference to me that struck me was they were all in the same font. Uh, and the same, they weren't their um, logos. logos or their colors, and, and it looked very nice and dignified. I, I didn't have a problem with that as much as if, you know, it's Walgreens with their font or sure. right. whatever. I thought, well, that, that wouldn't be so bad, mm -hmm. you know, so just okay. as a suggestion. Okay, yeah. great. Sounds good. These examples are... Much more, yeah. Good. Appropriate. <laughs> yeah. Right, yeah, we should have reminded them before. <laughs> so thanks for catching yeah. that. Do you envision a directory or wayfinding at the entrances to the development or internal to Probably. help pedestrians sort of <coughs> find their way around? Yeah, I think more internal. We had actually discussed uh, the last meeting, there was one here, and I think that's what we had bad examples too. Okay. Um, is kind of when you came in to get people going, but I think once you get in and Get, in your, get out of your car and you're walking around. I think just sort of more interesting signs that just say, Equinox this way, restaurant this way. It keeps people on the street too, because they'll see the sign instead of going back to their car to try and drive somewhere else, which is mm -hmm. what you know, the, the center's trying to avoid at all costs. And we have a lot of trees in and around, so I think a lot of the canopies, especially over time, it's gonna be harder to see the store side to side, so that'll help. And the last page uh, that we had uh, our first one was 18, uh, prohibited sign types. Uh, any sign not specifically restricted or mentioned uh, would be prohibited. That's the kind of gauge all the future signs, right, Blade Runner? Like if we haven't <laughs> mentioned it, there. you can't have it. Right, exactly. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, kind of covers us across the board. And the remaining diagrams, there's one highlight on there, but that is just talking about the canopy sign. Uh, the limits that are in the balance of this guideline are also um, shown on these elevations and diagrams. The signs, size limits? Mm -hmm. Size limits, location limits, um, and for instance, this one that's highlighted as canopy signs must be reviewed and approved by the ARB. And that is... Uh, and I don't think there's one other issue well, thing to discuss, uh, which was just the size of the signage right. themselves and the letters. And um, can I recap the board we had said? Like, yeah, we had requested, like we, as he said, there was questioning about the overall sign sizes, and based on last meeting, we had requested uh, 10 inches of sign letter max for inline tenants, 14 inches for the corner tenants, and 18 inches for anchor tenants. That's how we had left it. Oh, sorry. Yeah, that's right. Please. Go. Okay. <laughs> so we weren't here for that meeting. I think that was the meeting after mm -hmm. we were here. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of what we were working on was under the premise that what we had originally proposed was we, the first night we were here, we talked about distances from. Right. Uh, maybe pull up the wall green side. Is that a Sure. Uh, yeah. And I think kind of where we're, the wall green side itself is 24 inches. The stop and shop sign is 26 inches now. And we're basically what we had was three different types of signage. We had um, anchors at 24 inches. Um, we had um, the inline, I can't remember what the inline 14, yeah. 14. 14 corner tenants are 18. 18. Anchor tenants that are located uh, within 100 square feet, 100 linear feet from the street are restricted to 20 inches. And then any uh, anchors that are located in the center of the project that are in excess of anywhere from 665 feet to um, 420 feet. I'm sorry. 
What yes, that that this is I mean, four hundred and twenty. This is going to be four hundred and twenty feet back. So right now, this right. sign is seventy feet closer to heights than it will be in the new with the new Walgreens. And so, what our thought was, there's probably only going to be well, Equinox obviously one, Walgreens is two, and maybe one other one that would be twenty four inches. And Walgreens or Equinox is not showing the interest right now in uh, making their sign any larger. They're thirty thousand square feet. They're really the only other tenant. That would be 7,500 square feet or more. So, uh, and in the new stop and shop sign in Good Wives, I just, I don't know why I didn't notice it before. I was just on signs today. But that has to be somewhere above 30 inches. Uh, it's significantly, I don't know if you know, Dave, how big it, it needed is, must have needed feet. Yeah, so it's a huge sign. So we were not keeping with anything larger than what, what was here. And the new zoning allows up to 20 inches for letter for all tenants. So we're saying, hey, on anchors, 24, and everything else below that, 18, and then 14. So really trying to contain, you know, not letting people go up to the maximum what's even allowed in the code right now. So that was our thought. The code right now, you said, is 20 inches? Mm -hmm. The maximum is 20 inches. Where is 20 yep. inches allowed? Where is it allowed? Mine. It, it could be allowed on a wall sign or on a, a, a monument sign. And how many feet from the road? I mean, is that... It, it still wants 10 as the max for storefronts along the Boston Post Road, for example, like we looked at today. Uh -huh. But it can allow, the, the ARB can allow up to 20 inches if you feel it's appropriate. On the Boston for, Post Road? Yep. Okay. Trader Joe's would be different than Bon Bon Hair Studio. Because the frontage is so, so far, far back. back. Yeah. Right. But do we, with the new code, do we have a formula for no. that? We don't. Okay. I think this is trying to put a formula to it. Uh, the way I'm, I'm seeing this, it's that's making that. And, and as far as this being a pedestrian zone, a village zone versus a, there was a little discrimination in that yeah, too, there wasn't there? Yeah. If, I think the highway allowed 26 up to 26, and the pedestrian 20 inch. And so what we were trying to do is find that balance of well, there's a, the anchor. Walgreens is here, it's going to be back another 70 feet, 24 inches seems like the right proportion, um, back 420 feet, um, but we don't want everyone to have that because it's just not right, it's not in scale with everything, and that's why we were trying to look at the respective tenant types and then restrict the height of those letters, so um, even though the regular Darien Code could allow up to 20 inches, we, we don't think it's appropriate for the pedestrian nature of, our, of this project. Do you know how high the lowercase letters are if the W is 24? Because mm -hmm. we're kind of enjoying what that looks like, but it's not all 24. Right. Yeah. Uh, well, the L is probably the S. They, I think they grow a little bit. Um, the I'm not, I haven't measured exactly the A. When they go in for the mm -hmm. permit on the sign, it's just the letter height so we know the W is 24 mm -hmm. and uh, the stop and shop one over here is also 24 inches we have a picture of that um, the, the logo, logo is 26 is, I think it's 30 oh 30 yeah sure yeah and also we're thinking it's not like there's 10 anchors on site really it's limited to probably Equinox uh, Walgreens and one other tenant mm -hmm. and those uh, those tenants are also Pretty far back in the sun itself. Thirty-two yes, 32 for the logo that's there and stop and shop letters themselves, uh, which are mm -hmm. only the O is not twenty-four inches. Are you going to see the entrance into this center is approximately as wide as it is now? Uh, it's a little wider. It's a drive. Yes. So you're talking about seeing these signs from Heights Road. Will you, in reality, be seeing most of these anchor tenants from Heights Road, or no? Um, well, you, though, well, Equinox is uh, the same people. Sandy Flint is our architect, so our uh, landscape architect, so I would refer to it as Sandy Flint. Um, so when you come in here, there's sort of uh, this tree line. This is probably the 24-inch letters would be here for Walgreens. 
and then there would be 24 inch letters here and if uh, Equinox ever did anything this is uh, one way out this way I mean I guess if you were looking closely um, you could see it here and potentially uh, if they did something on this side coming down Edgerton I think that's 800 feet from here to here is that yeah here to here is 800 feet and when we took pictures which do you have the one from Edgerton yeah it's almost not visible. So this one's from, this one's 300 feet, which is less than the distance that we would be proposing from there to the other side. From out here. Right. And then this one, 300, and this one's from the end of 665 from the street to Equinox. And it's, uh, so you can see like a glimpse of it, but nothing. If you're a driver, well, that's or kind of my point, though. I mean, the necessity to make them 24 inches is supposed to be so they're easier to read from the road, but you're not really going to be reading them from the road. Well, I think it does two things. One, it's kind of reading it from the road, but it's also sort of a hierarchy of tenants when you're inside the well, shopping yeah, center. Yeah, I, can, I understand that part, yes. And so, um, and it's just trying to sort of say, oh, this is a larger tenant over here, it's Walgreens. Uh -huh, uh, you know, you're uh -huh. coming. Trying to, I mean, if if you're in Road Heights, you know where Walgreens is. But if you're coming from outside the area to look for Walgreens or, or go to the restaurants, you're not necessarily going to know where it is. So the larger, it to us, it helps visually cue you where you're going. So you may not be able to read the sign from Edgerton Street over to Equinox, but as you're in the parking lot within the shopping center you would be able to read it as you get closer and closer. Mm -hmm. But from Edgerton Street, like the bottom picture, mm -hmm. if they had 24-inch letters on the Equinox building 800 feet away, mm -hmm. um, you're not going to read it, even if it's 24 inches tall. But that's okay. We don't, we don't need to get people from Edgerton Street to Equinox. Oh, no, I don't. No. Yeah. no. But we would like you to be able to read it from this distance, which would require about a 24-inch letter. So once you're on site, this is about middle of the site, from about here, right? That's where the arrow is. We'd want you to read Equinox there. Well, I think you certainly could read 24 inches, yeah. 24 inches is legible and has a best impact at 240 feet. The calculation for all sign legibility and letter height is mm -hmm. one inch for every 10 feet. I don't know if this is helpful or not, but I personally don't. I, I'm personally fine with the proposed the 24 inches. I, I'm actually, I don't mind. I don't know how you guys feel, but I'm just going to put that out there. I don't, I don't mind 24 inches. I think it seems appropriate. I, I, would, I would agree with you. I okay. agree. Given the site plan of how many anchor tenants you're planning yeah. to have, it doesn't seem yeah, too it's not gonna be like obtrusive. It yeah. becomes 12 anchor tenants. It's a little in your yeah, face. But, yeah. <laughs> and you're saying you guys are on three anchor tenants, probably max? Probably max, yeah, that's just the way we have the merchandising it. mix. And then the corners of the corners, there's not that many corners, and the rest of it's all in line, so really most of the tenants are going to be 14 inches. Yeah, okay. Dave, Rita, you want to hit the last meeting. Do you have thoughts on that, on that side? Uh, you know, Dave, I'm fine with it. <laughs> Humphrey? I agree, I think. I'm okay with it. You just hope they're not all going to be caps. Right. They usually are, in general. I don't know. With that, but like the Walgreens will be Walgreens again, so it won't all be caps. Right. Yeah. Tenants usually don't like to look like they're yelling in their sign right yeah. now. Mm -hmm. Someone sends you a caps text or email. So, for instance, Stop and Shop, Walgreens is rolling a couple of things there. If we in any of the ones on the 24 inch height, if you only anticipate three stores or four, you know, four anchor stores, would you have any issue with limiting the number of 24 inch to four tenants? Yeah. Yeah. Good idea. Sure. Yeah. Or we can co come back here if it's more. Does that sound mm -hmm. reasonable? Yeah. Okay. That's a good idea. I like that. Okay. I have a comment on page 21 um, regarding the vertical banner signs. Uh, I'd like to see it say, if you all agree, um, that 
that the top of the banner sign should sit comfortably below the window trim, not the top of the window sill. Yeah, no, it just that. seems like an odd design choice to have it climbing you know, up beyond it. The bottom. No, it's a good new on site. We hadn't thought of that. Oh, I think we were talking okay. about the window when we were in here the first night, and I don't oh. think we okay. thought about that. Okay. Well, it's proportionally the four foot by eight foot is it's not correctly drawn. Yeah. Because no. if you look at the like an elevation drawing, you know, picture of it, you know, you're coming up. Mm. You, want it, you want it to sit, I think. Um, okay. Not a problem. Maybe a yeah, I think number. Like four foot, actually, more like that. Mm. Four is half the height. Mm. Yeah. Well, it's so a maximum of like four feet. So. Yeah. Mm. Well, if we look at the door, the door is a three foot. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and door. this looks like a three foot long yeah. sign that's depicted. Mm -hmm. I just don't know if this one that's going to be. Big. Big. Yeah. Big. To extend out five feet. What about like if it was limited, like, you know, the golden section? Um, or, oh, four. Mm -hmm. Probably, you know, mm -hmm. I, this. Um, I think it's one to one point four six something. I can look mm -hmm. out for it on mine yeah, as a way of controlling the proportion mm -hmm. of that. Because a four by eight, if somebody were to go for that, looks like a sheet of plywood. It's just yeah. been stuck up there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah I agree. The, the size, I think we we had it a, a little bit higher, which would made mm -hmm. a lot more sense to make it a bit larger. I think if we wanted to go to three, that would be fine. I don't see any tenants having a problem with the actual size of the sign. Yeah, I think it would you know, just not feel like it's, mm -hmm. you know, like this sail kind of right. yeah. Like sticking out there. Yeah, the way it's drawn is actually not offensive, I think. More than the would probably be able to take. Yeah, sure. Isn't there another photo Absolutely. Earlier on, they're limited yeah. in a couple of different ways. On page 10, okay. you can see some examples. That's uh, similar to what we had envisioned oh, if yeah. they were used. Mm -hmm. Not not many tenants mm -hmm. use these type of signs, mm -hmm. but to give the, uh, the neighborhood wide use to some sure. diversity. Oh, so yes, on page 10 it says may project up to five feet from the face of the building. So you may want to reference back mm -hmm. to that. I think you meant it. There was mm -hmm. something holding it, right? And then yeah. from there it went out mm -hmm. five feet. So there was an arm or two arms on it. Right. <coughs> I can't imagine an arm being any more than... Yeah. Six inches off. So if you guys are comfortable with three foot six, I think that that would be fine to limit these signs to that size. Okay. So better. maximum projection of three yes, foot better. six, and overall sign um, sign would be three foot uh, projection. We'll modify that diagram. And said the bottom of the window trim just to get that the yeah. So would, the, would you like us just to kind of do a clean line of everything and then the, the items we discussed today and some of the little tweaks that we're um, working on now, highlight those or sort of send a, a, a highlighted and a clean to everyone so you can look at them? We could send a clean to Dave to let us review, I guess, one last time administratively. Okay. Um, and I'll give us a time limit, you know, to get back to you guys. Okay. So there's not, it's not, we can keep this moving. All right, great, thank you. Is that okay, Dave? Yeah, that seems good. Um, I just, yeah. One thought on page four, going back to the area of signs. Um, so 
I don't know if it's right or wrong, up in the top right hand side where the it talks about lowercase copy. Mm -hmm. uh, and then it has the P, which is the tail going below the line, mm -hmm. or the K going up above. Mm -hmm. It seems to me you would either count one or the other, but here it doesn't count either one. Mm -hmm. Like for L or K or other letters that go up higher than an E or whatever in the lower case, mm -hmm. you should count that upper portion, but maybe exclude the tail. The current regulations would count both. It's the smallest rectangle around mm -hmm. the whole copy. So here it went to the other extreme and just kind of excluded both the ups and the downs. Right. And I don't know if that was on purpose, if you know of a lot of brands that do it that way and has to, have to have it that way. I, I just sure. didn't know. Uh, we've experienced it before where tenants that usually use the lowercase letters just have, for some reason, a bit more elegance to them, so they don't necessarily go crazy with them. Um, but I don't see anything wrong with counting one or the other. If we're counting both, I think that's that's uh, going to hurt those tenants, which mm -hmm. I don't think is good. Uh, but right. counting one is... And I think there's I more things that. that go up than down, right? Well, so I think can. you count the ups. I'll just move. Well, That's real technical speak, more ups than downs, right? Sorry. Information is very clear. Now, would that bring the entire rectangle up then? Mm -hmm. kind of yeah, there? so the so way that I just sketched it really quick was yeah. that it would, that area okay. becomes larger. But that doesn't cause you to shrink the main block of lowercase letters, does it? Hmm? Does that come into the calculation then to cause the other lowercase letters to shrink? Well, I think we just need to define it. Uh, and it's if just they both different. are, they would. Yeah, certainly. Yeah. I mean, if they both do, you know, a G, a Script F, they all go below the line, yeah. but the T and the L's all go above the, the lowercase of the other living body. So maybe it's just easy to say this the whole thing. I, but there's going to be some examples where people say it hurts them because they use lowercase letters and. And I'd like to avoid. Right, that. and they only have one, but because of that one. Sure. They have a P and they have a K and it, it kind of hurts them in both. Example, yeah. Well, yeah. like Orgles. Yeah. There's the L and the J. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Hmm. I, don't, I don't have the right answer. I just raised it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No, I think this is fair. This right. fair. Anything else, guys? Nope. Mm -hmm. um, did you guys do landscape plan? Are you going to bring that back to us? Uh, I think you have it. You have it? Yeah, I think it, there was... Doing this, sorry, yeah, is that the final landscape plan? Uh, we are working on the more definition. I think on that, there were, not all the beds were defined, so okay. um, Clinton and Associates is working on the working drawings right now. Got it. So, like, what's there, like, so even around the equinox, like, the plantings that have been drawn in your in your plan, those are new plantings? Yes, all those are all new. Well, okay. Everything's new. Got it, whole got it. Because equinox is staying. I wasn't sure if you saw you were ripping out kind of the sidewalks around equinox and adjusting. Yeah, every, literally everything is getting. Uh, so when you come down where the prison painting building is, that whole thing gets ripped down, regraded, and then we come into here. This becomes a retaining wall okay. um, uh, back on this side. All this new landscaping um, goes in right next to Equinox on both sides, some trees. And then there's some new, and they get a new sidewalk. All the grades around it change. The entry stays the same. Okay. Um, but all, yeah, all, everything green is, is new. It's planting. Yeah, there's nothing staying that's there. Got it. Okay. Okay. Other than um, the sycamore trees out in front of Citibank are staying. Okay. Okay. Do you have control over the. Uh, Neroton Avenue. <laughs> I'm still Preach. hoping for my alley of trees along the road. The chase. Avenue. They and all the way up. Goes up to the gas station. No, but that's the, well, not in your control. Or no, the only thing we have control of is this, and oh. then this was Tom Golden when they get, end up getting this approved. Um, 
Chase has control over all of their landscaping themselves. We try. Yeah. Remember when they came in, Chase? Mm -hmm. It was going to be the most beautiful garden. <laughs> great guys you did a really wonderful job addressing everything oh thanks really appreciate, appreciate all your feedback yeah okay he has a couple of small changes so you're going to adjust those send us a new copy administratively to dave keating he'll run it to us yes okay sounds um, good that's good um, one question for you for um your letter are you do you have the somerville master's address or the red bank the red bank one okay yeah that's that's you not what's this is the somerville that's, That's the normal construction in okay. federal, and then okay. our, our yeah, we run all the federal properties that are ours, ours and federal's properties down kind of from th this area down to kind of central New Jersey. Okay. Are you driving back to Red Bank today? Yeah. Wow. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Good. Good. Yeah. <laughs> How fun is the theater? What's okay. your timing? Uh, right now, working on construction drawings and um, we're hoping to submit sometime later this year for a building permit uh, and then start as soon as it falls up next year. Exciting. Yeah, we're very mm -hmm. excited. Okay. Yes, and I, I don't have a timeline yet when we'll be back for the building itself, but when I send the last, uh, when we send these, this next review in, I'll give you kind of an estimate of just sort of when we'll be back. Okay, oh, that'll be great. I'm sure you're excited to come back and see us again. No, of course, <laughs> yes. <laughs> Actually, all the feedback's been great. It's, we've got an hour and a half to drive. Now, I didn't see the, um, the meeting of the... Yeah, that's on me. I got it from the other one. Alright, so... I just wasn't sure if it was So, no problem. Uh, I got a lot of notes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, uh, moving on, uh, any other business? Uh, do you guys have any other business? I have one thing I wanted to mention, but... I don't know. The one thing I wanted to mention is we have a new member. I emailed you guys all about that. Mm -hmm. You saw that, actually. Mm -hmm. You sent it to me. Um, Leslie McAuley, she is, uh, I think, an object for training, and she's a landscape project now for the last 10 years. Um, so she was really looking forward to this last, uh, last week. So she can't come to us in town, so she'll supposed to be starting next week. So she'll give us a little, an overview of her background when she comes. Uh, and that's it. Awesome. Cool. All right. Kate is no longer the new. Kate, I know. I just got yeah. displaced as new. It's fantastic. I know. That's, that's the shortest term I think of new. <laughs> you had years. I had two weeks. Great. Thank you very much. Thanks, guys. It's 9:49 p.m. That will conclude the meeting. Take us off air.